again. Welcome to Match Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are in the last <laughs> show of September already. Like, October's in a couple days. I know. By the time you guys are watching this on TV, it's October. I do not Although, know. Although, it has been the mildest September ever. I actually put on a little shirt because yes. I was like, it's the end of September yeah. and I'm hot. Well, we were, <laughs> yeah, we went through the, that, I don't know if it was last week, the week before, it's all a big blur. All, but I mean, it was chilly and cold and we had the heat coming on and stuff. And then all of a sudden we had to turn the air conditioner on. I mean, because I'm fussy and we have, we had the air conditioner on on. The house yesterday it was yeah, too warm it, it, it was it just was, too warm it, it, was, it was clammy it, ugh, i don't like it um <laughs> I'll i mean you. i love the weather i just don't like the house being tammy does not like clammy <laughs> i don't like sticky icky um so yeah i'm okay oh, with that um, I, I got some crazy hair here today. yeah my hair is a mess Everything. this is on purpose folks yeah. just so you know <laughs> um I do enjoy the warmer weather. I hope that we have a nice mild October. I hope it doesn't rain all the I time. I mean, we need the rain. I think it's going to rain tomorrow. Or there's a chance of rain. There's a chance of rain on Friday afternoon. So, so much for sine waves on Friday afternoon if it's going to rain, which is all fine and dandy. Um, but I hope we don't get one of those rainy, soggy late October's. I hate that right. weather. When I every, mean, the leaves are all on the ground and everything gets all wet and it's slippery. The, and the gross. colors are beautiful. I'm going to be filming a, a campaign ad Sweet. and I was over at uh, Livingston yesterday and I was walking around the pond at Doors mm. Pond and I was like, oh, I think I might come shoot it yeah. here. It is just so beautiful yeah. with the colors. Well, even and the, the, I bet it's beautiful. I, haven't I mean, it's been, beautiful everywhere. I haven't been recently, but I bet the bridge on Electric Street, I I'm, bet the backdrop I'm, there is I'm doing is really, both of those actually because I mean, I hike both of those yeah. or hike urban walk, walk or whatever cruise Move around them. with the That's doggy right. dog poor nelly she jumped oh she jumped out we only take her in the low car now because she's like 14 yeah. and she's yeah. starting to get a little old and she jumped out of the car last week and just like sprained oh, her shoulders and i gotta pick her in Aww. and out of the car but you know we'll take her out and I walk those trails, so I think I'm going to go shoot something there. Um, There's so the, many pretty spaces in Manchester. People uh, people underestimate how many really, really um, scenic places we have right you here. Know, I have to tell you, because Tammy and I were out over the weekend. We did some door knocking. We did some deliveries, all that good stuff. And... and um, it's fascinating to go into these little neighborhoods yes. where, you know, we, we you gave us some maps and I was up in an Isn't area that, that I hadn't really been to before. And there are all these little cul-de-sacs yeah. and all these just, oh, it's just well, it's last charming. Uh, Dan really. and I were out last night and one thing we learned is seven o'clock, the lights get shut off on the world. I mean, the darkness. It was like suddenly we were driving, everything was fine. All of a sudden it was like poof dark. And I was like, well, seven o'clock. That's the cutoff oh, apparently. Yep. Um, I mean, it was literally seven o'clock and I couldn't find the house number. And I was yeah. like, okay, it's time to stop when yeah. I can't see the house number. We were getting a car, so it wasn't terrible. But um, one thing I noticed yesterday, um, in particularly up on, God, Stewart Street, Forest Street, there's like this whole little neighborhood between Mast Road and um, Rockland. So many beautiful flower gardens oh, like yeah. great enough that dan's like look at that house look at i that i was definitely also sort and, of stealing with my and eyes i'm assuming for the it's the covid building thing seems like there's way more little patios with lights and decks than i recall so uh for our viewers back home i thought it was really cute i saw this meme on facebook where they were saying what the words were that people were googling during yeah. the lockdown and, um, you know, in different states had different things. I'm only going to remember the random yeah. ones. But, like, one of them was, like, meth lab. How to build a meth, meth lab. lab. <laughs> one was, like, you know, how to make yogurt. Or right. I don't know, whatever. But New Hampshire's was, like, do it yourself yes. and how to build a porch. Yeah. And I was, like, that is and so I do. Us, I'm really, you know? so, I mean, maybe. You built I, yours. Well, we did. Yeah, see, I was got motivated yeah. to do my patio. But I, I do think, I mean, I, I'm pretty... I notice yards. That's part of my fun thing about knocking on doors is I get to go, oh, look how pretty. I want that in my yard. Well, also, it's a way to identify uh, plants. Yeah. And, and, you know, I try and only plant uh, annuals, perennials. perennials, so that they come back, yes. right? So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to spend all this money and all this effort yeah. and all this physical labor, yeah. right, <laughs> um, then I want it to come back yeah. and come back. So sometimes I get tricked where someone spends a lot of money on the on annuals, annuals and which you're are beautiful, like, oh, but I'm not spending that stuff that's blooming and you're yeah. like oh yeah i can't afford yeah <laughs> i a couple of the yards i was in last night made me feel like i lived in a like a you know 
dirt hole. Because, I mean, my property tank, my, it was abandoned for so many years, so it was so overgrown. And people keep saying, oh, it looks, looks so great. nice, but I'm like, eh. No, you've done it, a lot it, of work. We were back I mean, there, the patio you put out. It's great. It'll be fun. It'll be great. It'll be, so I know it'll be that much prettier next year. Well, that is the good part, right? It's sort of like when you invest in your future, like people yeah. could invest in us. Uh, you you see the returns right. over time, you know. You know, every time I put a perennial in, that you know, I'm like, well, but next year it'll be that much more, and next right. year it'll be that much more. Yeah. Um, so here in Manchester, let's see what's going on. Um, Elizabeth Moreau bought I a house saw. in Ward One. I kind of knew that a week or so ago. I saw that. Um, She's got two, I think she's, she's got two young kids and one on the way, so they needed a bigger house, and she said after this whole shutdown, she definitely wanted a house with a pool. Oh, she wow. She had a requirement, like, wow. and I want a house with a pool, which could, you know, which yeah. I don't really blame her. I mean, you know, God forbid we get locked down again in another summer. If you've got kids, you've got to have something for them to do. Well, I mean, and I think we should talk about that. Why are we even saying those kinds know. of things? We should, in America never have another lockdown I know. that is just the reality um, of how a free society works because you know i was thinking about it today i saw that um you know if you look at the rulings that have come out of the courts yeah they're not based really saying on, they're, they're, based on you know everything that's been going on as far as i can tell and i don't think this is an exaggeration to frame it this way Basically, the courts are saying that, oh, you know what, if there's a health emergency, regardless of what it is, and I think that, that you know, we will be vindicated over time that actually our position was correct, that, you know, this wasn't the kind of, the response that we had wasn't the response we right. needed. But the courts have pretty much said, oh, if there's a health emergency, we will suspend the Constitution no. of the United States of America. And that is pretty much what happened. So... That's where we're at. So yeah. I would love to see, you know, more more uh, freedom focused people get in so that we can restore yeah. the balance yes. between citizens and our government. Our government's supposed to work for us. Not our government other. is not supposed to tell us we're not allowed to work. Right. We um and the same thought process, um, keeping in mind that I have been out talking to voters in my ward and I don't know. I don't get the feeling that people are, like, shuttered into their homes. I mean, maybe there are, and I guess those are the people who don't answer their door. I mean, when you, anybody who's ever knocked on doors in a political campaign, ha, most of the people don't answer their doors anyways. But I'm finding that the people who do answer are, are eager, to, eager talk. to talk to people because I think they feel distanced. I think they're lonely. I mean, we've like, been in, you know, if, if people have been sort of following these recommendations more closely than some of us have, then, yeah. um, you know, people must be feeling extremely isolated. Uh, it's not a healthy situation. No. It's not healthy for society. It's not healthy for humans to really no. not be able to have both physical uh, and, and just emotional contact with other people. I've certainly, you know, we were out uh, on Sunday and... Yeah, everyone we talked to seemed yeah. eager to talk. I didn't run into, you know... Uh, uh, I didn't get uh, a lot of... I, I didn't... Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe we're just talking to... I don't know. Maybe it's just our voters aren't, aren't crazy. Um, so, on the same note, trick-or-treating... So, I wanted what? to ask just before we yeah, go, move on from Elizabeth, um, isn't it possible, even if you move, to serve uh, your no. term You in have to be... Uh, the alderman and the school board member must live in the ward. Lord, they're in. Um, so they're talking about either a special election, yep. which would cost the city a fair amount. And yep. my understanding is they've basically said we don't have the right. money. Or um, they wait until next year. Right. So, I um, mean, I get that. I mean, Elizabeth had a good point that it, the people in Ward 6 should have representation. But that's what the aldermen at large are for. Um, the world wouldn't end. I don't know. We'll see. Well, you know, I mean, we also have that that uh, charter commission, education charter commission question that's going to be yeah, on the ballot. There's one right answer here, folks, and no. that is vote no. Yep. And as, um, when you were it down in what in South Carolina is it North Carolina? South, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I always get confused. Um, Brittany sat in and. Um, that ballot, having that extra ballot that we didn't need to have this year and have it be a special election, that probably cost the taxpayers of Manchester like twenty five. I mean, grand. it probably cost us the cost of. Oh yeah, we of could have. We could, here's uh, a thought: they yeah. could have done a special election to elect the the Ward Six Alderman and, and done the Charter Commission question yep. then. 
And so just uh, to remind viewers back home, basically what this Charter Commission is, is first of all, it was illegally uh, established, yeah. right? So, so we know that, and if you've been following the show for a long time, you'll recall that they, uh, what, what would it even be, like Ill illegally mandated, right? So they just, they put together this commission. They didn't allow people to actually get on the ballot in yep. the right way. There was, there was a issues. There was a lawsuit. The lawsuit um, sort of said, well, we don't know. We're going to let it go forward, but you probably have a point. Yep. Uh, that's sort of plodding along in the courts. In the meanwhile, everyone was just like, eh, so what we'll do is we'll circumvent the circumvent, and we'll just go to the aldermen, and we'll have them put the question on the ballot Correct. for the school board. So now we have this question that's coming out and the bottom line of the issue is, do you want to give the school board of Manchester the right to increase your property taxes willy nilly, however they want, uh, because it would move it out from under the tax cap that we currently have. So currently with the tax cap, it means that as we know, low spending results in low taxes. Right. And so you want those two things to go hand in hand. And there's this real move to try and increase the spending to circumvent the tax cap. And we're talking about it's going to be yeah. thousands yeah. of dollars well, that even, they're coming for. And please remember the school... Uh, enrollment is has gone down. 700 students this year alone. I mean, I think because one number I saw was almost 30%. Yeah, but right? I'm saying literally just from the COVID shutdown, 700 students in the Manchester School District simply did not re-enroll this year. So our normal trend is going down. And then there's this pocket of more going down. So like the spending goes like this and the, you know, it, it's bad. It's, it's, it's So vote no. Vote no. Definitely vote no. <laughs> um, I saw in the paper last week that, and I give the, I got to give the police chief credit for doing this. He put a survey out about Halloween, and good on him because you know who was he to to say we do X? Maybe that's not what people want. But he was mostly concerned about like, do parents want it to be in the afternoon and then into the evening or just in the evening? Because yeah, what do I have? I like surveys. Basically, the majority of people came back and said, no, we'd like it from six to eight at night. Halloween's a nighttime thing. You know, the people who have little, little kids, first of all, little kids aren't going to die if they go out in the dark. It's not. No, it's six part o'clock the is still like. Is, is that sort um, of like creepy, So they hadn't actually thing. said there w that Manchester would, you know, say there was trick-or-treating. Um, although the governor did say, I'm not going to prohibit trick-or-treating. That I mean, towns. I'm sorry, but do we live in America where no. the police chief of a small town is allowed to cancel no. Halloween? And I, I think I don't know. I Maybe what... we should go back to like everyone just do what you want. If you want to go trick or treating, go trick or treating. The... If you don't want to go trick or treating, don't go. It's not that hard. I folks. think the police got involved when they tried to like streamline it into hours because there are kids in the i mean not so much anymore because there aren't as many trick-or-treaters as there used to be but no when, they destroyed a very fun right tradition but well, well done. i think parents do it too i think parents just don't let their kids do anything anymore but um well yes but there's the an entire book about that. the police <laughs> the police <laughs> would set certain hours which used to be in the daytime in manchester but thank you phil Garazzo, for getting it moved back to halloween night but um I think the reason they would set certain hours is so that there weren't kids, that people could be aware that there's going to be kids in and out of the street, whatever. But now we've got all this discussion about should, the, you know, there are some towns waiting for guidelines. And I thought, for goodness sakes, do you really need the government to give you guidelines on whether or not you want to hand out candy to little kids in costumes or whether or not you as a parent want to let your kid go to the door and get candy in their costume? If you're, if you're worried about it as a parent, don't go trick-or-treating. If you're worried about it as a homeowner, do what many, many people do every Halloween. Don't put your light on, close your door, and don't hand out candy. My house, we have a big light-up dragon. We're giving out candy. I'm not afraid of handing a little kid. I'm not going to catch COVID that way from handing some little kid. If I'm really worried about it, I'll use hand sanitizer. Like, 
Just think, you don't have to wait for the government all the time to tell you everything. But, you know, and, and we can kind of pretend this even relates to COVID, but based on, you know, the years I've lived in Manchester, I've just seen this sort of trend towards control, 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 control on all things, including this, right? For years, they moved Halloween to different days. Yeah. It wasn't on the day it's on. It used to be you know, on it's, it's like, mm, folks, I think... What we have is a trend in the wrong direction, and what we need to trend back towards is individual liberty and freedom and choice. If you want to do something, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Stop asking the government what you're allowed to do. That's not how free people operate. Speaking on other things that the government has said you can't do, and this is for a different reason, um, and I wanted to clarify because I did knock on one person's door and they had it misunderstood. Um, the governor has said no open fires, but that means like no bonfires because we we have, we're in a drought situation and I, they're very concerned about, you know, wildfires. I mean, there was a fire on an island, a brush fire on an island in, in Concord. And I was like, how does it, that's got to be homeless people. Homeless, but still, yeah. what happens is these fires start and then they can easily get out of control. Um, but when they say no open fires, he, they, it explicitly did not mean backyard, you know, fire pit type things. This was like, don't go build, you know, don't build that pile of pallets and burn it right now. It's, it's not the best thing to do. And sad, sadly, I guess sometimes we do have to have the government remind us, don't be stupid. Um, now here in Manchester, of course, because they wanted to get money for things, um, you're supposed to have a permit to have that little backyard fire pit or a chimney or whatever. Um, I'd love to see somebody do a freedom, uh, not freedom, a right to know request and see how many, um, how many fire calls are actually made due to actual outbreaks in backyard fires. Cause I'm gonna guess it's like none, um, but they charge you $50 a year for this. They claim it's a service. It's not, it's a nuisance. Um, I don't think most people have that $50 permit. But anyways, just be careful with your fires. If you're gonna have a backyard fire, I mean, it is a good idea to have a spark arrestor. You know, like if you have a chimney, they, it's like a mesh so that the stuff doesn't know, go people, up. people, just this exercise personal sense, responsibility right? and common sense. You know, being human isn't that hard. No. If you're gonna make a fire and it's dry, be responsible have about it. I don't understand it. Like, I'm like, wow, do people actually have a fire without some sort of... Some you know what happens is the more this coddling happens, people are the less responsibility right. you instill. Right. It is part of the process. Once you tell people they're a victim for everything, yes. that they can't think for themselves, then they that they are a, I don't know, slave to the government, then they all start to go... Daddy, can I? Mommy, yeah, can yeah. I? Nanny state, what, what, what? Yeah. Instead of going, what can I do? How do I function in the world as a actual, actualized human being making my own personal choices that are good choices? Um. <laughs> Sorry, no, yeah, okay. I'm just like... I'm like, I got all these random topics uh, written down. I, I totally was ill-prepared today. Uh, no. um, so today is Tuesday, the 29th. Tonight is the first presidential debate. Oh, my goodness. What is that going to be like? I, I, I don't can't typically even, watch I, these, but I think I we might. We watch them sometimes, but we usually watch, like, the recap. I mean, it depends. Depends on when they are. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's going to be it'll really be interesting. interesting. I mean, it, it, it yes, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what they just, if, if the conversation of um, Trump's Supreme Court nominee comes into the debate, because this is an interesting, and this is like civics. This is what people don't realize. Like you've got, you always have like the political parties you know, running there, but there is certain stuff. So the president nominates Supreme Court justices. That's just how it works. And then the Senate, not the House. So when um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or whatever her name is, stands there next to Chuck Schumer talking about Supreme Court nominations. Nonsense. I have no idea because she's not even in the Photo US Senate. Off, yeah, no that was just, it. that was placating. That was, that was pandering, yep. complete pandering. But anyways, um, the Senate must act 
on the president's nominee. And That's just know, the way it works. So so one of the things I saw in, in sort of social media, and I guess it's probably on mainstream, uh, except once again, watch our show, but switch off the TV the rest this. of the time. <laughs> but um, is, you know, that people are saying, how dare he do this? He needs to wait, whatever. And I'm like, you know, I went back and looked and there are a lot, well, a lot, including Obama, well, appointed a Supreme Court justice in an election or year. nominated right he nominated and gene shaheen our senator gene shaheen thought it was absolutely un absurd that the senate would not take a vote on obama's nominee now here's the kicker and then steve valancourt would always say elections have consequences we have a republican president and a republican majority senate when Obama was president, he was he had a Democrat president and a Republican majority Senate. The reality is, whether we some people like it or not, when you have the president and the Senate, guess what? It's going to happen. Your nominees go faster. They get through the process faster. This is what politics is all about, and elections have consequences. And I was reminded this morning of something very interesting. Even... If on January 20th, before either, let's say Donald Trump does not win the election, which I don't think is going to happen. But if he doesn't win the election and Joe Biden come from his cellar is going to be the president, before Joe Biden is sworn in on January 20th, Donald Trump can, can still, still nominate a Supreme Court justice and the Senate must act on it. So... The nomination of Amy, I always get her name wrong, Amy Conan, Con Amy, let's just go with Amy. She um, is socially conservative, but she's fair. I mean, all of her, all of the I mean, critics have, have said she has a good head on her shoulder. She's so, great. I mean, she clerked for Scalia. Yep. I liked Scalia yep. a lot. He was a, right uh, constru a constructionist. So he would say, as it should yeah. be, you know, I practice law on two yeah. continents. I'm allowed to say these things. I have always been shocked by the the uh, interpretation that the Constitution is a living, a living it's document. It's not. It's words on paper. Because, it's hard fast. Because, you know, as a lawyer, the one thing we're taught is if you draft a contract, you can only look at the contract In front of to you. say this is what our intent was. It The contract is supposed to reflect our intentions yes. accurately, right? So when we went to this logic, non-logic, irrationality of, oh, this is a living document, basically what you're saying is you're saying that we have a contract, but, but I can actually it. just say, Interpret oh, I know we, way. Met, we said that, but really what we mean now is the exact yeah. literal opposite, yep. including you know decisions that I have read that actually say things like, including but not limited to now means limited to right <laughs> including you know i mean it's just it's it's gotten to the stage where it's absurd so what i'm excited about with her is that she is someone in scalia's sort of uh vein uh, of, of yeah. thinking that believes we should look at the constitution as written yeah. and we should and then if there's anything in there that we don't like we as a country should amend that yes, to make it clear so that we all once again agree on the plain reading of the words right. that are written that people are telling us this is what binds us as a society together because if we're saying we're bound by a document that does that doesn't actually mean that anything. doesn't mean what right. it says it means or that we can interpret to mean whatever we want we end up with the world the way it currently is. Well, was, so I'm excited about it. I am her. too. And I, I was kind of like taken aback because, I mean, we're females. You know, I have, I have, I've always been a strong female, I think, you know. I have no problem. Um, I think that women, I think women are afforded the opportunities to do whatever they want whether people make choices that hinder those opportunities is their own business you know if you um but i some of the pushback on her from the left i thought i don't understand which things are you for and which things are you against because they're no, going no the, they're going the after thing, they're her hypocrites. because she's a working woman so she's yes, a professional like, woman she's a working mom now she can't do it no one has ever asked in a supreme court if hearing father, if the father well and could manage thought, his workload. And I thought 
that the left believed in women working. So I'm mm. all like, okay, so which is it? She can work or she can't work. She can't be a mom and a professional. So there was that. Then I saw something and I saw it in multiple veins on subject matter. And if this is where the Democrats want to go, please, by all means, do it. Apparently she has seven children. I would never have seven children. <laughs> I have a dog and a cat. That's all I can handle. I believe some of them are adopted. Yes, two are adopted. And they are darker skinned than she is. Who cares, right? Oh, no. I've seen things saying now that it is inappropriate for lighter skinned people to adopt darker skinned people. And I thought, wait a minute. I thought it didn't matter what color people's skin was. Why is anybody in 2020 I mean, still looking at the color of somebody's skin and making decisions I, I, you know i it. just I, I you know what genuinely appalls me about the left is the hypocrisy that they approach things with it's like they assume we can't remember from day to day what you know what is happening so something like today it's this and then tomorrow it's the rank opposite and it's just like Hey, guys, like, can we at least I mean, one of the things I really enjoy about the philosophy of liberty is the fact that it's very consistent. Like once you internalize the, yeah. poli you, you know, the sort of thinking, which is free people should be able to make their own choices. It should, you know, whether they're good or bad, the way the system should be set up is if you make a bad choice, we shouldn't reward you for the bad right. choices, which is the system we currently have. We should actually say, you know what, you need to get your act together. Yeah. And so so, you know, it's the same with this appointment. I see it all the time. I mean, you know, I'm currently getting attacked, you know, for so many things where I'm just like, isn't this what, what you are you even talking about? You know, yeah. I'm only getting attacked so far that I can see because apparently I talk to people. I talk to people. <laughs> I guess that's now a bad thing. Uh, I don't know. The people I'm talking to don't seem to mind talking to me. No. So, you know, I, I just think, you know, it's, 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 may we live in interesting times. This election is coming up. People yep. should please, if you are going to vote absentee, make sure you are requesting your ballot with good time to yeah. go. There's probably going to be, you know, I, I see know they're we're just sending towards... out, they just sent out, the city of Manchester sent out almost 9,000 absentee ballots. That's the main, that's the first batch. And then they'll send them out daily. Um, that's a a lot of people who voted, I mean, the city's never sent out that much. And it was always good to talk to the city clerk because I know that they're doing it efficiently and carefully and they're not just willy nilly mailing out ballots. Um, if you're, by the time but you- But they are asking if they can, you know, start to process it earlier. Because, yeah, that's a- yeah. That, So that'll be interesting. To um, see. If you, by the time you read this, um, if you have any questions about Republican candidates and don't know who they are in your district, you can go to manchestergop.com and there'll be a tab at the top for 2020 candidates. Um, contact information and whatnot for all the candidates representing Manchester from the Republican Party. Um, that's all we have time for this week. It goes so fast. Um, enjoy the weather. Get out there and, um, you know, stay outdoors while we can. And we'll be back next week. Bye. Take care.